The Necrons of the Zarakan dynasty are here and consist of three two packs and a single pack including the Overlord. But are these a worthy foe for your Space Marines? Shut up, Shut up and, and sit, sit down. down. Hey you scallywags, just got these Necrons in, I've been very eager to crack these open and to play about with them, so we'll do that right now. Couldn't wait till the kids are asleep so you might hear them in the background. Get all this off. So first up we've got the Immortals with Tesla Carbines. Usual stuff here. Nothing new to report. Nicely packaged double pack. Oh, don't lose that. Let's uh, take a look. One of these bad boys. It's already plugged in there. Probably glued in. Here is... Necron Immortal. Looking pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. Cyber Skelly look. Overall, a cleaner aesthetic compared to uh, the McFarlane's offering. I'll probably do a separate video to compare the two. This is all about the Joy Toy version. Is this Tesla Carbine looking? Be great actually. Good job. Impressed so far. Next up are the Immortals with the Gauss Blasters. There you go. Probably be very similar to what we've just seen, just different weapons. Similarly packed, so these hands may pop out. Make sure you don't lose any of those. Safe and secure in their plastic bubble. Get rid of this bit. Move them out. Yeah, same. All the looks of things. Yep, same. Ideal for army building. Here's the weapon. Gauss Blaster. Looks awesome. Loving the different shades of green. A little dry brush in there as well. Let's get his mate out too. These are extra hands. Death Marks. There we go. So these are slightly different. The top bit there is different. The body seems to be the same with death marks. So I think they've got the same hands as the others. The weapons aren't connected on the back. Yeah, so these hands are the same. We'll take a look at it in more detail. Just get these out. So we'll have a look at this on the back. Very different, actually. At least the upper half. That bit there is different. Connection. And these bits, as you can see, look. So, yeah, it's just the top part of the head. The pauldrons and that. Yeah, we'll go into articulation and stuff in a bit. The rest is the same. It's 
Still looking cool, though. And here's the weapon. It's a kind of a sniper type thing. Drilled barrel. Awesome. Nice look. And finally, Overlord. A single release. There he is. This box is a bit smaller than the others, as you'd expect with only one figure inside, although he is a bit bigger. Here he is in his plastic prison. There, not much really. No hands, no additional hands or anything like that. Just everything you get is on him or attached to him. Hope that's not important. Looking good here with all this stuff here. You can move out of the way. Very thin. This thing, I doubt you'll be able to get that out of his hand. Looks like it's attached. Oh, this. Nice looking. Got all the greens on there. So I'm going to play about a bit and we'll get into some articulation. The Overlord has a lot going on, but it's surprisingly not hindered by all the wires and other bits of the design. Let's take a closer look again at the uh, the details in better light as you can see here with the head and all those little bits there on the collar. This looks great. The whole of the torso is more visibly different. I think all the uh, everything else is actually quite different as well. This thing here just stuck to the hand, although it's an articulated hand underneath. We'll be able to take it off. These bits just, you can move out of the way, kind of bendy. They don't get in the way. It's thin legs. There's, a, yeah, some damage to him, some battle damage. It's a nice, impressive weapon. Great look to it. All the greens, different shades of green. See more battle damage in the back here. Even on the legs. His wires are nice and pliable though. They just simply move out of the way when you articulate him. His head is kind of limited. You can go left and right. But yeah, it's a bit more difficult with him than the others because of that crown thing, whatever it is on his head. And it's can go up a little bit, a tiny bit. Oh, and that's how it works. Double barbell in there. Oh, mine's actually come off from the back though. Well, that's how it is. It's literally plugged in the back, and I think it's glued in as well. Let's see there. But that's not too difficult to fix. And just plug it straight back in. I don't think I'll actually glue it though. I think it's necessary. Yeah, just the crown bit thing is on his head. Headpiece that's gonna hinder movement really. Without being stuck in, should be able to get slightly bit better movement on there arm goes up till it's hindered by the pauldron you can go forward and back elbow bend over 90 with a twist and a double pin and ball on the hand which is also on this side but you can't move the hand at all on there movement at the upper torso and waist too which works well jean-claude oh underlord they can go up and all the way if you like. Nothing's hindering it really, uh, which is the same for the back. So really good splits there too. Nice twist at the thigh. Knee bend just over 90 with a twist as well. Toe goes down. Nice. Up. And pivot left and right. So all in all, very good articulation for this guy 
takes over the head. But even that's not too bad. Let's just see if um, he can strike a pose with all this stuff going on. Yeah, he's just got a few things there. He's a bit thin. We can get him to stand and hold a pose. Be a bit limited with, obviously, his uh, accessories or lack thereof. But he's got everything on him, which I quite like too. I'll just pose him as if he's attacking someone or something. So very nice feeling in the hands. Very easy to uh, get him into. Little poses, of course, because he's quite slim. But there's just obviously these other things going on, which are not too much of a problem. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, you need a really super straight surface. Stand him up, but let's see if we can just get him in a vanilla pose. But definitely good stuff if you're looking to grab one of these yourself. You've got a good, good look and articulation. These three I've got lined up together as they're pretty much the same figure, except for the death mark, which is only different uh, on the, the top part, really. And even then, it's not going to be too different. The head works exactly the same. It's just a different design. That bit. These don't change anything on the articulation. On the back. So just the aesthetic that looks different. But exactly the same articulation. So we'll take a look at this guy and his articulation. Removing his uh, Tesla carbine. And I've actually taken this bit off here as well. So it was actually glued on. There wasn't uh, that much glue on this one, so I was able to take it off quite easily. There's only a pinch of glue there. But it actually fits in quite nicely when you pop it back in. It doesn't fall out unless you're, you know, doing some rigorous articulating. It'll stay in there pretty much. And uh, then you've got this base buck, which is really awesome. I might try and do that for the others, or the glue on the others. Uh, just be careful if you're doing it yourself, because uh, it may not come out as easily. I like the clean look of these, and the color and shades on the uh, that bronze or whatever it is. It looks quite nice. So we can take a better look at the head articulation on double barbell. We can go left and right. There is an up if you do that, which makes going left and right a lot easier. A lot of tilt. Arm goes up to the pauldron. You can go up there and back there. Twist at the elbow, which is about just over 90. Ball and pins for the uh, wrist here. Movement at the upper torso and also at the waist. This very slim waist. So altogether you can get some decent movement out of that. Get his head up like that and kind of have him forward. Leaning forward a bit. Jean-Claude! Ooh. Powered by Tesla. The hip joints are painted. Leg goes up and can go all the way around. Back here too, of course. Twist at the thigh. Bend at the knee over 90. Twist as well. Foot goes up, down. And pivots left and right. Does everything you expect a cyborg skelly to do. And this base buck is just going to be great with any kind of sci-fi setting that you've got uh, in your 118 collection. 
obviously works brilliantly with Warhammer, but anything else will also work very well. I like how they're also a bit taller than your average like 118 scale action figure. We'll do some comparisons later, of course. His leg can go up like that as well if you wanted to. If you bothered to balance him. There's really not anything that's hindering articulation. I think maybe the bicep twist would be good. Because the elbow, you can get to twist further, but slightly hindered because of the um, elbow bit of the back. So a twist on a bicep would have made these perfect. And, and also just with the, the way the head is, perhaps a bit limited there too but otherwise a great base body uh George we have uh, developed here for the necrons liking it a lot right so we'll do a few comparisons the overlord stands just a bit taller than the other two we'll compare now with a few other figures so on the left we've got Bo-Katan and we've got on the right Paz Vizsla from Hasbro's Vintage Collection, Star Wars. I think they work quite well. I like the how, how tall these are compared to them. These skellies are also a bit taller than the Sisters of Battle. But will look awesome fighting against these ladies. On the left we have Tau Fire Warrior. And on the right, we've got an orc. Orc, of course, is huge. Well, doesn't seem as tall, but bulky. And a little fire warrior there. Looks quite small against them. A bit bulkier. On the left, we've got an Adeptus Custodes, who towers over all of these guys. And on the right, Tech Marine. That's on a 2.0 body. It's about the same height as the Overlord. Both, of course, bulkier than these skinny cyber skellies. I initially thought these army builder necrons will only be able to hold their weapons one way but in fact you can have them facing the other way with these very versatile hands. So these two hands you get equipped which are just sort of gripping hands and you can use them for quite a bit. Each of the army builders also come with these two hands, the left sort of holding hand and the right trigger finger hand. But after playing about, I realized you can actually use any combination of hands really. Um, with each of these I've got differing hands. Here I've got trigger finger hands as well as the uh, gripping hand on the left, which is what it's supposed to be, I suppose. So works very well. This guy, who's um, oh, let him stand up, give him his dignity. This guy's holding it the other way. He's uh, got his normal gripping hand that he comes with. This hand here, and I'm also using the trigger finger hands. This one to hold the other side, which works out quite well. You can also use the normal gripping hand on there got the support hand on the left this guy is just using the same as the other one is holding it this way surprisingly the same applies for the death marks I've got this gripping hand on that for the trigger finger and then the support hand works very well on this bit here well, surprisingly that also works for this side so the trigger finger hand works as a support hand there works very well the Overlord is the one who you're not going to get much variety with. As he's got this hand, but you're not going to be able to take it out. He's just stuck with this thing. You could put other things in the other hand. But, yeah. That's it really for him. If you're on a fence with any of these, I would recommend grabbing them while you can. Uh, any of the two packs, the Overlord, or even the single ones that are coming out next. Any of them from the different dynasty. Grab them. They're great looking figures and they articulate well. And you can use any of my affiliate links in the description to help the channel. 
Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content, subscribe, and I'll scale you later.